Okay, well, thank you for that introduction. Um, I am going to tell you about IGFBP6 as a potential mediator of myofibroblast differentiation in Dupuytren's disease. Um, I, I'm just a student, so I do definitely do not have any financial disclosures. Um, and furthermore, my objectives, so I'm first going to give you an overview of my presentation. So I do have four main points that I, I will be making. I can't even see me from there, actually. Um, so my first point will be that IGFPP6 gene transcription is um, altered in DD, or Dupuytren's disease cells. And TGF-beta actually further represses these levels. IGFPP6 inhibits while IGF-2 induces ZD cell contraction. And then I will um, allude to the fact that IGFPP6 may prove to be an, an attractive therapeutic target. Now, in the big picture, um, IGFPP6 is downregulated into disease, and we need to know why. And this is basically the whole broad, general aspect of my project. So what is this IGFBP6 I keep speaking about? Everybody's like, what is she talking about? So insulin-like growth factor binding protein 6 is a secreted glycoprotein, which associates with the ECM. Um, its main function is to bind IGFs to regulate their bioavailability. Um, and it is unique in that it binds IGF2 with 20 to 100 times more affinity than IGF1. And it's part of the IGF family of proteins. So all these acronyms, meanings right here, okay. So the insulin-like growth factor family consists of two insulin-like growth factors, IGF-1 and 2, which I just spoke about, six IGF binding proteins, IGF-BPs 1 through 6, in addition to two IGF receptors. Now the main function of IGF-BPs is to bind and regulate the availability of the IGFs to the IGF receptors, most notably the type 1 IGF receptor, which is the signaling receptor which results in numerous effects, including cellular proliferation as well as differentiation. And I'm not going to talk about the type 2, IG, type 2 IGF receptor, as my supervisor um, advised me to not even go there. So, so why am I looking at IGF BP6? So, as my prof mentioned, uh, we and many other labs have done microarray, infrometrics microarray analysis, and we identified. IGFPP6 as significantly downregulated in the uh, Dupuytren disease cord compared to the patient matched control tissue. And this is in stark contrast to periostin, which is encoded by POSTEN, this other gene I have on my graph here, and it is markedly upregulated. So IGFPP6 is significantly downregulated in the disease tissue. Now, as many labs do, we confirm this by PCR. And if you look at the, so if you look at the PF vehicle compared to the DD vehicle, we see that there's downregulation of IGFPP6 gene mRNA, trans, mRNA in the DD cells compared to the PF. Now, interestingly, when you treat these cells with TGF beta, you have a further downregulation of IGFPP6 uh, mRNA expression compared to the PF. So there's some sort of mechanism going on here uh, with TGF-beta resulting in IGF-BB6 uh, downregulation. Um, after this, we wanted to confirm that protein levels were also mirroring this effect. So I looked at IGF-BB6 secretion, because as I mentioned, IGF-BB6 is a secreted glycoprotein, in, the condition media, in conditioned media from both cells, uh, from Dupuytren's disease cells as well as palmar fascia cells. So, uh, so in DE cells, we see that uh, there is lower, lower amounts of um, IGF-BB6 protein secretion into the media compared to the PF. And in addition, TGF-beta treatment of these cells uh, further inhibit, uh, further represses IGF-BB6 secretion into the media. So now I've mentioned what IGF-BB6 uh, I mentioned about IGF-BP6 levels in addition to TGF-beta, but as I mentioned, IGF-BP6 is a negative regulator of IGF-2. It, it sequesters IGF-2 from contacting the type 1 IGF receptor. So what role could IGF-2 possibly have? 
So in, a, in another separate study in a different system, TGF-beta and IGF-2 were shown to uh, be involved in combinatorial signaling to induce myofibroblast differentiation and collagen production, uh, both of which are characteristics of Duchenne's disease, which we all know. So if we take all of this together, it leads me to my hypothesis that TGF-beta signaling represses IGF-BP6 transcription, resulting in lower IGF-BP6 levels. <laughs> and this leads to increased IGF-2 bioavailability in DD to promote myofibroblast differentiation. So to test myofibroblast differentiation, I also did stressed FPCLs. And this is my graph for the uh, phenotypically normal adjacent palmar fascia, so the, pa the patient match control. And these cells were treated with TGF-beta in addition to this dose response that I have. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to go over this graph because there's a lot going on. So on my x-axis, I have time and hours. So we measured contraction after manual release over a period of 24 hours. And on my y-axis, I have percent contraction from the initial lattice size. So if there was no contraction, I'd have a horizontal line on the zero on the x-axis here. I have three treatments, a dose response of insulin-like growth factor binding protein 6. And I chose, so I've done 200 nanograms per mil of IGF-BP6 in addition to 400 nanograms per mil of IGF-BP6. And this is because we believe that uh, physiological levels of IGF-BP6 are on the order of 200 to 400 nanograms per mil. And so we chose one at either extreme. So if we compare um, zero nanograms of IGF-BP6 BP to just the TGF-beta induced positive control, we see a very um, high rate of contraction in, in these cells. However, when we look at 400 nanograms of IGF-BP6, we see a marked reduction of contraction in these, in these um, lattices. So this indicates that IGF-BP6 is uh, repressing TGF-beta induced contraction. Now we see a similar effect in DD cells. However, it's much more exaggerated in that the rate of contraction for DD cells at 400 nanograms of IGF-BP6 treatment has a much lower rate of contraction compared to the PF. So once we looked at um, IGF-BP6 uh, effects on contraction, and as I mentioned, IGF-BP6 should be inhibiting contraction because it's reducing the amount of IGF-2 in the environment, we looked at the, the effects of IGF-2 because we'd expect that IGF-2 should be inducing contraction. So when we look at the effect of IGF-2 on patient match controlled cells in, an S, in a stressed FPCL, we see that there's marked induct, uh, there's induction of contraction in PF cells treated with 100 nanograms per mil of IGF-2 compared to vehicle. And this difference is more exaggerated <clears throat> in the DD cells. So this all confirms my hypothesis that IGF-2 is in fact inducing contraction while IGF-BP6 is repressing TGF-beta induced contraction. So uh, in summation, TGF-beta is repressing IGF-BP6 transcription and protein secretion of DD and PF cells. And IGF-BP6 is inhibiting TGF-beta induced contraction of DD and PF cells while IGF-2 is inducing cell contraction. Now, future directions which I'm planning to do uh, with IGF-2, IGF-BP6, and with or without TGF-beta include effects at, on apoptosis, fibroblast proliferation, collagen production, and as well I would like to deduce the signaling pathways involved in IGF-BP6 transcriptional repression. So in conclusion, IGF-BP6 may serve as an attractive potential therapeutic target for future development of non-surgical interventions for DD patients. <coughs> so I'd like to acknowledge my supervisors, Dr. David O'Gorman, who you just heard from, Dr. Gann, and then people from my lab, and my funding.